I can't believe you guys have seen this movie more than once. <laughs> I've like, seen it To a be lot. perfectly honest, <laughs> yeah. I don't have any desire to ever see this movie again. Detective Mills, M I L L S, fuck off. <laughs> that, that's his phone number. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> R.I.P. Tracy. All right. Yeah. <laughs> R.I.P. Dingleberry, because he calls her Dingleberry. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Here we go. I hear you. Yeah, awesome. Do you hear uh, Ash, can you hear me? I can hear you. Fantastic. What are you pointing at, honey? Get rid of that box. What does it matter? So you can... That's me. Where's Dave? Why can't I see Dave? I don't know, because I can see him. Oh, there we go. Ha! <laughs> there he is. Hi, buddy. Hi. <laughs> can you hear Ash okay? Oh yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I have right. it. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Hi. Hi. Spectacular. <laughs> Thanks for doing this. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. All right, and we are recording. Oh, Back up off the mic a little bit there. There you go. Awesome. What do you need to see that for? I don't, but I'm gonna just leave it be. We don't have to touch it. I, it was shifting back and forth from his screen to your screen. Yeah. So I pushed one so that it wouldn't switch back and forth. Okay. <laughs> well, how do you want to hop into this? Um, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so we got this is Ash is joining us tonight. This is this is our brilliant uh, Palmer's pick idea, right? Yes, yes. The this where the. Where, so where is the apostrophe in this, and how does that affect what the, the rules of I the think, uh, I think engagement it's, I think are? It's, I think it's S apostrophe. Right. Palmer's S apostrophe, which is the play on the, uh, the original show, the first show we did together, which was apostrophe S pick. Right, yes. And, uh, yeah. So, um, this is Long Walk, Short Drink. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Uh, we got uh, me and my beautiful wife, Ash. Uh, just so you know, we we're trying to protect, like, we need plausible di deniability. <laughs> so if you, this is my wife, Ash. I'm Palmer. Okay. <laughs> That's what you call me. All right. <laughs> That's Dave. And he's married to the bride. Yes. Yes. <clears throat> Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. I can. I'm. I'm okay with that. Okay. So, uh, long walk, short drink. This is me and my beautiful wife Ash, broadcasting out of podcasting. I always say broadcasting, but where there's no yeah. broads around. Oh, well, there's well a broad. today there is. <laughs> there's a broad today. There's a, a broad here. <laughs> so, uh, podcasting out of Dayton, Ohio beautiful Dayton, Ohio. It's a balmy 40 degrees. Yeah. I think on in November. It's Thanksgiving week. Yep. Yes, sir. And I'm just uh, Dave coming to you from Northfield, Minnesota, where it is uh mixed rain and yes. Ooh, hear that. Yeah. Sweet crack. Ooh, yeah. That sounded dirtier than I meant it. Sorry. <laughs> uh, where it's 33 degrees and a mix of rain and snow today. So, damn. Wow. Do you snow on the ground? No, this, I haven't had any yet. Have you guys? No. No, just a little bit of sleet. I guess they did up in Ripon, like yeah. in Northeast Ohio, they had some snow. So, uh, that's. That's crazy. And then, oh, man, those poor suckers that live up in Northeast America, they got hammered. Oh, I didn't uh, hear about that. Oh, yeah. It was like they they were expecting they had already gotten 12 inches and they were expecting to get like by the end, like over 20 inches. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I just can't imagine. It, it was 70. It's Tuesday night. 
now. The Friday before here in Dayton, it was 75 degrees. Oh, my God. <laughs> True story. Less than a week ago, it was 75 degrees wow. for one day. And then it was just like, and cold. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, it doesn't make me very popular, but I'm, I'm sort of happy about it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> I would be okay if it just stays this way. Yeah. If it goes back and forth, that's annoying. Yeah. But if I'm, it's going to be cold and stay cold, okay, we can be in winter now. Yeah. I'm just so susceptible. Like, I get colds, like chest colds, like the shitty coughing for two weeks chest colds. I don't know, though. This is the first I, I winter. I felt it. I felt it, though. <laughs> It's like an uh, injured knee, you know it's coming. <laughs> yeah. Like every time the weather changes, it gets like that. I get raspy. I will admit, I would have had it twice already if I was still smoking. But ah, that's what I think the big difference is. Excellent segue, because yeah. I realized last time out we didn't do the account. And you have oh, other, yeah. you've been, uh, there are some, you know, as we discussed last week, you've had some horrible events happen in your life and you are still not smoking. That's outstanding. Yeah. I did not, I did not smoke through that whole that whole ordeal. It was close a couple times. There would have been lots of easy opportunities for him to do it too. Yeah, that's amazing. Um, Rock on. Do you have the stats? Yeah, I am um, uh, 141 days and 12 hours smoke free. Almost 13 hours smoke free. 141 13. So almost 142 days. I have saved. Seven hundred and twenty-one dollars, and I have not smoked. Man, this number is disgusting. I have not smoked two thousand four hundred and six cigarettes since wow. I quit. Oh that's based God. on the average amount you smoked in a day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's disgusting. <laughs> like absolutely <laughs> crazy, disgusting. I mean, because you think about it, every f every five days was a hundred cigarettes. If I smoked a pack a day, wow! Right, that's a lot. Oh. That's a lot of time too. I, I would just like yeah. literal time in your day that you get back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't know. Some of that time was uh, there has been some that like that's what I miss is I miss like, and I think we talked about this before. Like I I miss the the break in my day of getting to go out and just like enjoy a cigarette. And it wasn't necessarily the cigarette. It was like the thinking that I would get done during that cigarette. And then like the separation from whatever was going on that I enjoyed. That makes sense. Oh, Did you, do you end up, do you have a kind of a, a replacement for that habit or the, or at least that those breaks you were talking about? YouTube. Um, YouTube. Yeah. That's, <laughs> It's not. That's not a very no, healthy one at all. A, and that's not really a replacement. It's either. almost as bad as the smoking. Sometimes I feel like <laughs> no, uh, no, because you learn stuff. I don't know anyone else who actually. Yeah, well, you don't learn anything from watching four hours of fail videos. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you don't learn it. What you? The only thing you learn is that nobody obviously watches fail videos. Because they just try to do. It's like now it's to the point where it's like we can call it like. Oh, this guy's going to catch it in the nuts. And it's like, <laughs> I've, I've found myself in the last like two weeks asking like, does nobody watch fail videos? Why do they even try this shit? Like they, they're just going to like, they're just going to get biff it. That's all that's going to happen. So, ah, <laughs> uh, man. So, yeah. Uh, so back to here, this is why we call it Long Walk for a Short Drink. Yep. Do, you see, do, you see, do you see what happened no, there? Not. It's not. The title and the irony in that is not yeah. lost on me. Yeah. So, uh, uh, I completely um, understand. It's really so, very literally descriptive of the... the yeah. Th this yeah. is why our episodes are three hours long. Because it's like <laughs> we only tell one story every episode. It just takes that long. Uh, so... Um, Let's Back recap. To... Let's, yeah, let's let's recap quickly for uh, podcasts are different. I don't know. I don't know if people jump in the middle of podcasts. I guess you kind of do. So in case, as as they say with comic books, every every comic book is someone's first comic book. So you kind of gotta, you know, catch people. Up yeah. To speed. So I think uh, let's catch them up to speed on what the before we do the new Palmer's picks 
segment, just what that old TV show was real quick. What the old Palmer's Picks was. Okay, yeah. so um, uh, just to do, and please, Dave, like, chime in. Um, I don't want to, like, dominate the whole explanation if uh, that's not necessary. Um, so Dave and I grew up in the same small town and uh, ran around in the same, like, circle of friends and... And admits that they're like the best way that I can describe, or I should say one of my favorite ways to describe this circle of friends is they were just, we were all just very creative in different ways. And one of those um, ways that Dave was creative was he made movies and he made a version of um, The Crow, like a, a comic book faithful version of The Crow. Um, and that led to him getting a job at a local public access television station. Um, and I can almost remember the exact conversation where I was, we were at the cabin, which was just a, a hangout place that we would on Friday nights, we would, this group of friends would gather and sit around fires and, um, drink Coca-Cola and play music <laughs> and <right>. like, <laughs> And like that's, that's and that and, and just talk and like solve the world's problems as like 18, 17 to 19 year olds <laughs> are want to do. Uh, sands, drugs, and alcohol. That's always the part that I have to come back to is like we did not do the normal high school thing where it was like just drink and try to sleep with each other. We tried <laughs> to sleep with each other, but there was no booze or drugs involved. Like yeah. that didn't come until college. Right. Um, so, it's a so close, can it, I just ask? Please, there yeah. was nobody in the group who drank. It, it just, or I mean, it's just it, that the there, cabin was a safe. Some, sp- it, I mean, it's, it's like it's. It, I guess it's unfair to say there was never booze or drugs involved. Like I can remember times where there was not necessarily at the cabin, just with the group of friends, where there would be. Like, I remember there was a party one time at the cabin, and I remember there there was, like, a case of beer getting passed around. Yeah. I and I remember that. times outside of the cabin where, like, weed was present, you know? Um, <laughs> yeah, and increasingly so over the and years. And increasingly yeah. so, yeah, over the years. Um, <laughs> Hashtag but, <Marv. laughs> like, Yeah. But, like, I never... But it was... It was never a... Re- I feel like a lot of clicks and maybe this is just like the like the Hollywood take on it but I feel like a lot of clicks were clicks as just excuses to get drunk or get stoned and then try to have sex with each other. Yeah. We would perhaps that like, was people's I, hookups. We didn't we had no hookups maybe that was part of it. You know, we had Yeah, no, that like, was that was part of it too <laughs> and like we like well I mean I really think like being creative and being unique as pretentious as that sounds, I feel like that was like our drug or our booze. You know what I mean? Like it was. Yeah. It was like definitely people, what occupied us instead of like the search for those things that we couldn't readily yeah, attain with yeah, know, uh, okay. proper IDs. It wasn't so something we thought a lot about, I don't think, or at least no, I, I didn't. No. Well, I mean, there was always, there was always, uh, Bauman was always like, so. You want to do heroin? <laughs> yes. No, and he was like serious. <laughs> was he? He was dead serious. Like if he I was so said, curious, he wanted yeah, to drag you all like, down with him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and like I do remember him saying H bomb a lot. <laughs> yeah, and I'm pretty sure, like, if I would have said yes, he would like we would have done heroin. Oh my not, god, not really. <laughs> Jeez, <laughs> but like that was like that was an oh the conversation opener for him. Hey, how's it going? You want to do heroin? <laughs> no. <laughs> No, I don't want to do fucking heroin. Or and if you weren't paying close enough attention, and you somehow yeah. did did or said something that he could construe as you saying yes, yeah, he was like, "All right, let's go." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You want to so, so you want to drop some acid? <laughs> no, where are you even going to get acid? About yes, you go get acid. That's right. what I should have done. Is just called his bluff. You find some acid, and then we will drop it. <laughs> yeah, it's like we were just uh we were without resources to these things and otherwise occupied. It wasn't like we were nobly straight edge or something. We were just, Oh yeah, no, not at all. 
I, which is probably a good thing because it's definitely again, a good thing. Again, if like you know, if booze or weed or any of those harder drugs, I I don't think we would have been that silly. But like, I I would say booze and pot. If those things would have been more readily available, man, just think of like how much, how many creative things might not have happened if those, because then we would have just been drunk or stoned all the time. That's you true. Know? Yeah. Like, um, which one of those things? Not, Full it, circle. It's it's like. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's like inception there's just layers yeah. on layers um so one of those creative things was so dave had this job working on the crow which led to a job at a public access television station and i remember sitting at the cabin and and talking about it and because it was just blowing my mind that you worked at a television studio and you just nonchalantly said, like, well, anybody can have a show. That's what my, our, my job is. Like, <laughs> you come in and we make a show. And I was like, so I could make a show? He's like, and Dave's like, yeah, you can make a, we can make a show. <laughs> and that, like, led to this, I mean, almost like the conversation that led to this podcast, you know, <laughs> where it just, like, spiraled. Well, what would you call your show? Palmer's Picks? And, All right. Well, what would we do? Well, I love my friends. How about they bring on movies and their favorite movies and we talk about those movies and that's and that was that became Palmer's picks and so um it was really just an excuse to bring our friends while Dave got paid to work at the studio <laughs> to make a television show where we again drank Coca-Cola and <laughs> talked about movies <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know okay. like yeah Every episode, every guest who came on got a can of Coke, and we would drink the Coke while we talked about, and they would bring three movies, Yep. and I would watch the movies before the episode if I hadn't already seen them. All three? All three of them. Okay. So, like, I would line up guests, right, and uh, watch the movies, and then we would talk about them, and if I liked the movies, they became a Palmer's pick. And uh, if I did not like them, they did not become a Palmer's pick. So would you pick one of the three that were suggested or one of the three that no, were we, brought? No, we would talk about all three of them. But one would get to be a pick or all three all, of them could there, be? Potentially all of them could be Palmer's okay. picks. Right. There was a few episodes where all three of the movies became Palmer's picks. Yeah. And uh, there were some episodes where like one became a Palmer's yeah. pick. <laughs> right. I don't think there, I don't think anybody got no Palmer's picks. Like, That's true. I, feel like I remember you telling me about one person who brought on Seven Brides for Seven Brothers and a couple other movies that you deemed awful. Oh, yeah. I, <laughs> and you're like, like, I didn't pick any of those. <laughs> no, I picked Rocky Horror Picture Show yeah, because Aaron, Aaron, okay. Aaron brought on Rocky Horror Picture Show, Seven Brides for Seven Brothers, because I hated musicals back then even, but Rocky Horror is... <laughs> yeah. Rocky Horror is an exception. Yeah, that. sure. It is. I'm trying uh, to remember her, th- her third movie and I'm, I'm, I can't. Oh, man, yeah. What was her third one? I don't think they were all three ma- musicals. I know it was those two. And se- I couldn't even make it through Seven Brides for Seven Brothers. Like, <laughs> it's such a good movie. No, it's not. <laughs> no, the barn dance scene is spectacular. When they're building the they barn. They build the barn and they beat the crap out of each other? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, like not out of each other, out of like... Well, the other the jerky yeah. kids that yeah. like that are there, but they do it while they're like dance fighting. Yeah, like it's pretty <laughs> awesome. Yeah, that it's, sounds it's, good. <laughs> it's pretty cool. It's pretty good. Like I'm not going to deny seen that. It, Dave? Like, no, I have. I haven't seen that one. Yeah, oh, it's but like movie. we would pick a clip, like we like where there would be one clip that we would go to, cut to, and that would play. And then we would talk about the movie. I remember Larry was on there, and like he brought like Boogie Nights and. Fargo. A couple other ones, Fargo. And Fargo. And, oh man, because those two were not picks. He brought yeah. a third that was, which is ah, I thought I knew. He was so, crazy that you guys can remember the people that came on the show and the movies. That well, they, they were all our friends, yeah. and they were all movies that we were all talking about, anyways. Um, and I, at I, least I've seen the these part. in the last in the last uh, in the last year. I rewatched the series as I put yeah. it on DVD. Oh, so, okay. Yeah, um, I'm a fan. I'm a fan of the show. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Dave's Dave's favorite is like he, the at last episode because I had as I started to run out of friends, 
as I started to run out of friends, I started putting my whip, like my email address out, like to tell people, Hey, come on the show. And we did get like the English teacher from the high school, like came on, like, I didn't even know this guy. And he's just like, I want to do an episode with you. And like came on and he brought like these three classic films and like, we like, I like crack open the Coke and he takes a sip. And I was like, isn't that good? He's like, it is really good. Like, <laughs> it, like yeah. um, but th- like, there was only like him and uh, we got uh, a guy from the studio came on who is outside of our circle of friends. And I had some of my coworkers come on. But then after that, it like dried up. And well, so there was the, the last one listener, th- there was the one listener from, or the one um, person from the community because it, it only aired in one uh, city. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And it wasn't okay. the city where we lived. Um, oh, that's right. We did get one rando. Yeah. Like one yeah. random yeah. person yeah. like came on. That my favorite thing with the Coke on that one is that he, you're like, I, I don't even know. You said to him, it's like, I'm not even, I don't, I didn't even ask you if you like Coke. He's like, oh, I love Coke. And he goes, it doesn't matter if you didn't, I was still one made you drink one. Crack. <laughs> You didn't have a power. choice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so I forgot all about. We did get one random person, but on the last episode, it was like a clip show where we were just like going back and talking about all of our favorite moments on the show. And at one point, I have a meltdown where I like, I was like, "I'm not going to get mad. I'm not going to get upset." <laughs> Yes, I am. It's your fault that the show is ending. All you had to do was email me. You just needed to come on the show. And I had this like fake, semi-fake meltdown <laughs> yeah. about how like it, all they needed to do was email me. Like, who doesn't want to talk about movies? But uh, yeah, that was because <laughs> you're like, you come on the show. I'll give you a coke. <laughs> yes, <laughs> like that was a selling point. I don't understand why people don't want this. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> Oh, that oh. thing is great! Did, did did I send you when you guys visited? Did I send you home with the DVD of that clip no, show? No, I'll have to. I'll have to get you something because that is such a a fun thing because it's all like the best little moments from the yeah thirty some shows we did. Oh, I love it! So so I mean, um, so now that that was the and in that case, you know, with the three movies, they were like library titles that um, you know people could rent for 99 cents and that we could easily get to show the clips yep. you know they weren't yep. in theaters at the time and then um, we talk about each of them for about 10 minutes so it was a 30 minute show um, yeah so, so now we have a much more free form uh, approach and an, and an, and an entirely new uh, context with yeah it's like movies. a whole new format right so but definitely inspired by the original yeah there's 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 likenesses in there and so oh. um, so I know like every couple waste like one of the things they waste so much time is like trying to decide where you're going to go to eat, right? Like nobody wants to cook, so let's go out. Well, where do you want to go? I don't care where do you want to go. <laughs> Wherever you want to go, right? Like <laughs> yeah. and then that goes on forever. So we have that debate really bad. Like Ash and I have that a lot. And then the other one, and this one drives her nuts. <laughs> Because I know I will take the blame on this one. Uh, the other one that we may waste probably like three times as much time on is what we're gonna watch. Mm-hmm. Because he will come to twelve different options, and each one of them he'll sit and stare at it for three minutes and talk about. Do you want to watch this movie? Here's what it's about. Here's a little bit of a synopsis. And I'm like, yeah, that sounds good. Let's watch it. No, nah, I don't want to watch that. And moves on to the next one. <laughs> because there's got to be something better, right? There, but that's, there could be that's something the better. Downfall. Like the next, like, the next category could have something better in yes, it. Yes, there will always be and something. So then, better. like, then like we'll do that for like thirty minutes, and then I'll be like, "Well, what do you want to watch?" And then she'll say something. I'll be like, "That's garbage. We're not watching that." <laughs> So, needless to say, we would stare at the television for an hour, get frustrated, and then not want to watch anything, and yeah. realize that, okay, it's almost 10 o'clock, and Ash is going to fall asleep in, you know, so, an hour. So, so, we came up with this format that I, I really like it. I, think I do, it, too. I think it works really well. Where, uh, so, what we do is, one per, when it's one, it's always one person's turn to, to offer options, and the other person gets to pick. And then uh, I think I told you about this, but with the last episode, Dave and I were talking where we're going to keep whatever one doesn't, whatever two don't get picked, they stay in the rotation. So then you only have to come up with one new one, one. New one every yeah. time. 
Um, so we got to start writing down the options though, because we're going to forget them. <laughs> yeah, I, I I know what ones I have from this last time, okay. so I'll make sure I write them down. But uh, so one person offers three options, the other person picks one of those options, and then they have to watch that movie. It's just that simple, and you can ask questions about what the movies are about, or if neither of them, if neither of you saw them, you could watch the trailer too. Like we've done that. Um, so for the first, the, this is our first, if we've done this a couple times and it works out really well, it really like cuts down the time because what'll happen typically is like whoever's turn it is to come up with options. The other person is typically like cooking dinner or getting dinner. So we'll say, okay, you have to come up with three options while I'm cooking and that you have to have your options ready by the time dinner's done, you know? So if we're going to have a TV dinner, that way we can watch the movie yeah, while we eat. Yeah. It makes nice. the whole evening go a little faster. Yeah. And so, um, so for this inaugural one, it was, I had to come up with the options mm -hmm. and Ash had to pick. So are we doing like the last episode? Is that like the behind the scenes episode or whatever? Or like the, Oh, I don't um, know. I, I don't know. I, I was, uh, Let's just let this unfold, however you, however it seems uh, most logical for okay. the circumstance, and then maybe I'll modify that one accordingly. Because okay, like some big stuff happened in the kind of chronology of your life in the show. So yeah, I don't know, yeah, that's to, uh, that's true. That's All of that's true. Um, so uh, for this inaugural one that was going to be used for long walk, short drink, um, I came up with the options. So here are my three options. Uh, v for Vendetta, uh, Secretary with, um, Maggie Gyllenhaal? Maggie Gyllenhaal and is it James Spader? I think, I think Dave, Dave's going to whip it out right it now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's too bad it's a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I don't think we do have, I thought we did. We have, we have V for Vendetta, which there's a story about the bride. I don't think she's seen it still because evidently early in our courtship, uh, when she was visiting, she would have to come to Ohio to visit me from Duluth. That was playing in a movie theater and I didn't know her well enough to know that that was the one she wanted to go to at the movie theater. Oh, <laughs> like I didn't know it till later. And until I watched the movie and I was like, I saw this amazing movie you'd love. And, she, and it's called V for Vendetta. She's like, you son of a bitch. Six months ago. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I wanted to see. Yeah. So I, she uh. may still actually, it's possible she's seen it by now, but I, I ruined it for her by my actions. So, uh. so I have, um, I have, a, I have some thoughts <laughs> about that, but I think we own it. And I, I wish we owned the secretary. Both she and I like that one. Yeah. So it was Third. those two, and then I threw. I wanted to watch. I'm always up for watching V for Vendetta. I actually I wanted to watch, and this is like where the game comes in, because you try to manipulate to try to steer to the choice. Maybe you try to manipulate to steer to the choice. <laughs> Listen, if you want to live life being naive, that's fine. I'm just telling you, it's all about what you want in this world. All right, and by you I mean I. <laughs> the royal um, you. Yeah, the royal you. Uh, so I wanted to watch Secretary because I I've never seen it. First off, that was the one thing, and I was like, it's a little dirty. Maybe that me might lead to some fun time on the rectangle of fun, and uh, which is our bed. Is the rectangle of fun. Oh, that's not a new euphemism. That's an established household nickname. Oh, oh yeah, oh, the yeah. rectangle of fun, oh, and. Uh, so, um, I pick the third pick was, I'm like, I'm going to pick this because there's no way she's going to pick this one. <laughs> so I, I said seven, which if you know, Ash, Ash is like, like, uh, horror movies are a no go. And like Halloween was really this past Halloween was really tough for me because I, all I wanted to do was watch scary movies. All you wanted to do was watch slasher movies, scary movies, <laughs> and uh, and you didn't want to watch any of them. True. So I had to watch them when you weren't around. Also true. And uh, and I I had brought up Seven a couple times, and now to be fair, there have been 
a lot of movies, even early on in our relationship when they came, like Fight Club, I'm going to just say, was one of them, where the first time, because like movies are a big passion of mine. Right. And so early on in our dating, like she, the conversation, and I'm just, I can't remember the exact conversation, but let's just say it went something like this. Well, what are some movies that you really like or movies that you really found impactful or whatever? And, like, Goonies is my number one favorite movie of all time. Like, that's my favorite. But then, like, Fight Club is probably easily in the top five. And I remember Fight Club coming up and me saying, like, this movie was, like, so... It just struck a chord with me. It was, like, the I was, like, at the right time in my life when that movie came out that it just meant it really struck a nerve with me. And, I, and it stuck with me. And it still speaks to me when I watch it now. Uh, maybe even more so. Uh, and her reaction was essentially, and again, I'm paraphrasing, was like, I will never watch that movie. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> and then, like, slowly over time, like, because like, it's like the first maybe three or four times one of those movies comes up, it's like, I will never watch that. Like, don't, I don't even know why you're trying to bring it up. Oh. <laughs> and then, <laughs> and then, like, the next, like, maybe three or four times, it's like, no, I'm not in the mood for that movie. And then I know that it's fi- I'm finally like chipping away at it when she's like, well, what is that about again? <laughs> and then if she can bring it up on her own, and this is how we finally watched Fight Club, where she was like, what's Fight Club about again? And we weren't even anywhere near, like we weren't even in the Fight Club ballpark when we were trying <laughs> to pick something to watch. And... Then we watched it, and then what did you think about Fight Club? I thought it was an amazing movie. Like, three days later, she's like, <laughs> Fight Club. And I'm like, I know, right? <laughs> so, so, so can I say, I think initially my movie aversions were not described as accurately as they should have well, been. Yeah. Because it's not that I don't, it's not that I don't like anything with violence it's that i don't like senseless violence i don't like slasher movies that are gory and bloody and needlessly violent with no story to back them up but if there's a really good movie that has a good storyline and a good plot line and fight club is definitely one of those movies where it's like okay yeah there's a lot of crazy shit that's going on but the story backs it up and you understand logically why this kind of crazy stuff has to happen and it adds to the story in a meaningful way i'm on the edge of my seat and i was on the edge of my seat for fight oh yeah no there have been a lot of movies that you've suggested that i initially was not interested in that once i watched them and like gave it a chance i was like holy crap like this is a good movie silence of the lambs whoa silence of the lambs (laughs) that's another one yeah Man, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which was another one that you were like, I will, I have no, I have no inter- interest, no yeah. interest. I will never watch that movie. Yep. And in addition to the senseless, violent part of it, uh, Pulp Fiction that was another one. Oh, that was a great one. Whew. Yeah, <laughs> uh, there are scenes of that movie that flash into my head sometimes. It's really, it's awful. Yeah. So <laughs> the other thing is, you are like, and this is one of the things I love about you is like, you're really super empathetic. And yes. I escape into movies. Like, I use them as an escape from reality. And you escape into them in a totally different way where, like, you feel... I I just immerse myself in that world. You feel for those characters. And so, like, when when terrible things happen to them, that really bothers you. Because if they've done a good job of, of emotionally connecting you to a character. The Green Mile is a good example of that. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like if the Green Mile affected me because I felt so strongly for that character and for his experiences and for the whole story. Like it just it sucks me in. Yeah. So um which is another another well we will get to it. Uh so the last one that I picked was seven in the hopes that she would pick secretary. <laughs> but he had never strategic. seen Secretary, so he couldn't yeah. talk about it to convince me why that was yeah. should be my choice. And so I knew I knew this was leaning towards a direction that I like and this ended up replacing my desire to see Secretary when she says, Okay, so tell me about seven again. And I <laughs> and then I started to realize, <laughs> wait a second, she could watch seven. And then it's like it's more intriguing for me to watch her 
react to seven than watching secretary a movie i've never seen before yes right so i do the hard sell on seven i led with this was fincher and brad pitt's first movie together who then reunited to do fight club and you loved fight club and that I'm pretty sure was like the selling point. Well, because Fight Club was such a good story. So that yeah. convinced me that Seven probably was going to have a really good story too. So then we watched Seven. And you were on the edge of your seat the I whole was. time. You stayed awake for the whole thing, I which sure is did. Impressive, impressive. I stayed wide awake for the whole thing. Wide awake. <laughs> um What? Okay. It in one sentence Without giving any way, away any like plot points or spoilers, which is going to happen for those of you watching. So if you haven't watched a movie that's 15 years old, more than that, like 20, 20, uh, 20 years old, like 21. 20 plus years, yeah. 21 years yeah. old. Spoilers if, if you haven't watched a 21 year old movie, just so you know, we're going to spoil it. Let's uh, give a, just in case they don't know, I'll, there's a one sentence summary just to set the stage. So it's okay. two, two detectives, a rookie and a veteran, hunt a serial killer who uses the seven deadly sins as his modus operandi. Pretty simple. Okay. That's yeah, a, pretty that's si- a, yeah, that's good. And that's a good like one sentence. So if you could in one sentence sum up your your reaction to the movie Seven, just so we can set the stage of your how you felt about it. and it doesn't have to be one yeah. sentence but just like give your initial impression, impression of the movie yeah so i was i was very much sucked into brad pitt and morgan freeman's characters and the relationship between them and found it fascinating that in such a short amount of time because the movie only happens over the course of probably a week a week yep. yeah maybe right. I, I yeah. mean it felt like it was more than seven exact days it might have been like eight or nine days but over the course of that such a short amount of time, you can see Brad Pitt and Morgan's, Morgan Freeman's relationship, like, you know, they're rough edges at first, and then they start to um, form around each other and become more comfortable together. And then you see them form a relationship and a connection. And then the, the serial killer's influence on their relationship and on the whole, obviously on the whole movie, but like to watch their dynamic shift throughout each of the stages of the movie and to see how other characters played into their relationship was fascinating and horrible and really sad at the same time. Like, I mean, would, would you think it would be fair to say that the, the movie is really about their relationship with each other? Yes. Like Morgan Freeman and Brad Pitt and their, their relationship with each other and also their perspective on the job that they're doing. Uh, I think that is another recurring theme over and over and over again. Yeah. Uh, Brad Pitt and Morgan Freeman have very conflicting perspectives of what it is the job that they're doing. Um, you know, more, and again, because one's a rookie and one's a veteran who's like, it, it, we should say it's like the, it, it takes place over the course of a week uh, because it's Morgan Freeman's last week on duty. Uh, he's gonna going to retire, and Brad Pitt is his quote unquote replacement. Right. Yeah. Um, yes. So, um, and and Morgan Freeman's character is just toast, like in terms of living in yeah. this violent city and dealing with all these horrible things. And yeah, yeah. he's he's at the end of his not only at the end of his career, but just like the end of his sort of faith he's and humanity. Desensitized. Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. he's, I actually think he's like not desensitized, which is the problem. Like he's, he's taken it all on. Yeah, yeah. It's like, he's yeah. just like, I can't yeah, take I can anymore. You know, like he would have that, he'd have to turn that metronome on to try to yeah. tune out the sounds of the city and stuff. I think, you know, Maybe he desensitized in the way of like being numb to it. Like he's not, he doesn't feel the same kind of, I don't know, like not empathy is that's not the right word, but he doesn't he doesn't see it in the same way that Brad Pitt does, where maybe Brad Pitt sees it and is like sad or upset by it. Morgan Freeman sees it and it just toughens him even more. I think Brad Pitt sees it as like sees the city as nothing but potential. Mm. And Morgan Freeman sees it as all like all the potential. That's like the sad part of it for him is that the potential is all gone out of the city. It's just, 
it's it's unsavable. Yeah, he's tried. That's a, good, yeah. Spent, that's a great way to put it. Yeah, that is a great way of he's, putting it. He's he's put thirty plus years into trying to save it, and given he's allowed that to change him in 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 a way that he now feels that it's unsavable. Yeah, yeah. and I think that Brad Pitt comes in, and I don't know, I I he sees the potential there to make a difference still. Yeah. Um. I, I mean, in a in a very like twenty two year old Brad Pitt naive kind of way, um, it, it's all like like piss and vinegar. I yeah. guess you could say when he comes onto yeah. the scene. Uh, There's a great scene in the bar where they have that kind of argument uh, about um, Morgan Freeman's character. Somerset says something about um, you know they're talking about it, and uh, and he's like. He, they're both maybe a little drunk and and Somerset goes oh and, and you care and then Mills goes like damn right and then he starts yep. they have an argument and at the end of this uh, I found this quote and it's uh, Mills character says I don't think you're quitting because you believe the things you say I think you want to believe them and that's why you're quitting and you want me to agree yeah. with you you want me to say yeah 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 you're right it's all fucked up we should all go live in a fucking log cabin <laughs> it's good yeah. for for Brad Pitt's yeah. role he says, but I won't. I, I don't I won't say that I don't agree with you. I can't. And um, right. it's interesting because in that moment he walks away. But you could it's it's one of those things where you know Morgan Freeman's character is where he is, and like what we're saying about the Mills character, and then uh his wife Tracy, uh played by Gwyneth Paltrow, who uh, of course at the time uh the two of them were a couple, Brad Pitt and Gwyneth Paltrow. Um yeah, I think being involved in their lives sort of awakens something in, in Somerset uh, that had been, I think, that I think he feared probably was gone. If we, Well, and if we see, like, do you feel like Morgan Freeman is trying to save them? Like, maybe he sees them as they haven't been tainted by the city yet. Uh-huh. They're still new, you know, like, because they, they've moved in from the city. And um, I, I think that scene when she confides in him that she's pregnant and, and he says, if, you know, if you decide not to keep the baby, don't tell him. Right. Yeah. But if you do, you love that kid. And man, she has that great reaction. Oh yeah. I was kind of emotional thinking about it just now. Yeah. That's a great scene. Yeah. Um, but like, he's telling her like, don't, if you tell him and you don't keep it, that will change him in a way that will like stay with him for the rest of his life. Like it's all he's, I feel like he's just spends once they finally connect, once they get over like their pissing contest in the first, like in the first act of the story. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, it, he's just, he's constantly trying to save. He really cares Brad about them. Pitt. He cares about yeah. them. And he's trying to save Brad Pitt in through connection, also trying to save Gwyneth Paltrow. Yeah. Um, and I think she brings that about because Somerset tries yes. to keep his distance from them. And then like, Tracy just invites him over to dinner, but not, yeah. by, not by talking to her husband first. There's that great yeah. scene in the office where <laughs> yeah. he's got the phone and he's just like, um, I'm coming over to, uh, or he's like, fine. I'll, uh, he's talking to his wife and his, uh, more Somerset is talking to Tracy <laughs> and Brad Pitt's in the corner being like, what's going on here? And then he hands him back the phone and <laughs> she's already gone. <laughs> yeah. And then he goes back to working. And he's like writing on his desk and like Brad Pitt's just sitting there looking at him. And he's like, well, and he's like, Oh, I'm joining you for dinner yeah. tonight. Like, like, Oh man, there's so many great that, um, that every frame of painting, uh, yeah. Channel on YouTube has a great dissection of uh, the use of cinematography in seven and how uh, he uses it to, sh- to show the shift in their relationship. He, um, oh. he, com- he compares the two scenes where they're with the chief. It's like the two of them and the chief mm-hmm. and how he uses the cinematography to show how they're very standoffish with each other. And then later on, in another scene with the chief, how the two of them basically gang up against the chief to get what they want and how they just use camera movement to portray all that. It's really interesting. Huh. Uh, 
interesting. But I, I mean, but that's, I mean, that's Fincher, you know, like he's just has this, man, what a great fucking director. Yeah. And this was, so, uh, I mean, Alien 3, I think was his first commercial uh, theatrical film before that. I did a yeah. lot of music videos and commercials, but this was the one to kind of announce like, a, you know, him as a... <laughs> Um, yeah, a kind of a, a stylish filmmaker Sorry. and stuff. So I think through our discussion, we've we've really established that it's not just a kind of a because in a way this could be some kind of slasher or detective movie or something. But based on what they're, we were remembering from it, like you actually do kind of you, evidently they do a great job of creating these characters that you connect with, even in this simple story. Oh, absolutely. And I think all right. And Dave and I have talked about this. And babe, you you can. I'm sure you can relate to this too. Uh, the Fincher is great of at putting very, very gruesome graphic things in these. I think he spends so much time in like building these characters that, and this is where we'll ultimately get, but you, when that gruesome stuff happens or the, the very shocking things happen, you're just like, oh, you, you, it's more, it's not, oh my gosh, that's so shocking. It's, oh my gosh, these amazing characters have to deal with that. That's like your reaction that you're feeling. Yeah. You know? Um, he builds, it's almost like he builds empathy into yeah. the way he's telling the story. And so like what we've talked about, Dave and I have talked about it, but like the beating of Angel Face in Oof. Fight Club mm. is like, that is one of the most gruesome 30 seconds of film. Yeah, that's that, rough. <laughs> I mean, it's. It's so intense. I mean, Jared Leto, that sh that one shot of Jared Leto's face, oh. like, and he's got no teeth and just yeah. like sp is spitting up blood. And but it's just a flash of it. And I'm thinking of Seven, like the first victim that you see is that like morbidly obese man, and like it just uh, got a bucket. What's in it? Oh, ah, yeah. fucking vomit! Yeah. Like the way he says oh, it. Yeah. Just and like, he's like doing the thing with his nose, like to get the yeah. smell out. <laughs> yeah, and like, and then they show him in the morgue, and like <laughs> the, the guy, disgusting. like the guy's got that like big giant like two gallon bag, which is his oh, stomach, yeah. and like, yeah, uh, he's naked on the table, and uh, the the it's gruesome. Yeah, it's gruesome. The prostitute yeah. scene is like, and and that one is like so. Excuse me. So <laughs> like, <laughs> it's elegant. I think that is the most gruesome of all the murders. Yeah. In the yeah. whole movie, and you never see her body. You never see that thing in person. Right. You see a Just Polaroid of, of it. it. Yeah. Yep. And you see a, sh a sheet draped over something with that guy. And really, I mean, what makes it so gruesome is his reaction to his it. reaction, like him having to relive what he was forced to do. Yeah. Oh, that, yeah. I, I mean, that's I, that's burnt on my brain. That whole thing. She was, she was, she was just sitting on the bed. It's like, it's yeah. so um, yeah. manically and like, then, oh, it's awful. I mean, and it's then great. I can't it's help. Awful. I mean, like my mind starts to think about what kind of position do you have to be in that you could be forced to do something so heinous yeah. and then i start to feel empathy for the people who are involved in the murders because that like that's real life their real existence is that they were forced to do these awful things or forced into these awful situations like that person in the bed the Oh yeah, the sloth who the sloth. who like oh, man. was forced to essentially like rot in a bed yeah for for a year. Oh, and, that's right. Yeah, I, but here is the one, and I hate to nitpick. This is the one one of those continuity things that I'm just like I don't care how meticulous you are. They they got him. He was discovered. A year to the day he was strapped into the bed, like the, like a literally a year to the day. I, I don't care what kind of meticulous planner, and I mean John Doe had pages. He was obviously very meticulous. There's no way he could have planned that down to the day. Like I think that was it was almost. I couldn't suspend disbelief on that one. That took took me out of it. That one little. That it was down to the day took me out of it. But if you think about 
um, John Doe being so manipulative in the other ways that he was manipulative in that story, I have to believe that his manipulation was powerful enough to literally turn the detectives into his puppets and guide them exactly where he wanted them to go. And I think that's exactly what it's trying to convey. But the only thing about that is, is they were st- the, the only clue that led them to sloth was the greed murder. And they were stuck on greed. They could have easily figured out that that painting was upside down in the first day, which would have led them to sloth a week earlier or oh, right. three days earlier. You know what I mean? Like it, it's just, it was, it was, it was just this continuity thing that it was just too big of a stretch for me. I don't know. That, was that, like, that's what I'm picking. But when he, he, so he, he calls that one time, right? And said, I've done it again. Um, I'm trying to remember at what point that happens. Cause is that maybe him giving him or like giving them enough of a clue to find sloth as well? Aren't they in his apartment when he calls them? Yeah. No, no. I thought that was uh he, vanity is the one he calls on where he's like, I've gone and done it again. Yeah. That's why I couldn't remember. Um, that, cause that would have made sense if they caught him on the day where, yeah, but no, the, well, what leads them to sloth is they, they go to the lawyer's wife because the clue was her eyes were highlighted in his office. Right. Yeah. And so they take photos of the crime scene and as she's looking through them, with fucking post-its over her husband's body. Like that's yeah. th- like that's what was protecting her from the like the shock of seeing her husband's body was a post-it. Um she as she's flipping through though, she's like this painting's upside down. And they had already burned a day just trying to figure out what what, what he was trying to get them to see. And that's when they go back, look behind the painting with the like fingerprints get forensics in there and then they have to run the prints which takes 48 hours or whatever is that where they wake wake up on the bench yeah they're like like and that's where i i think that was the turning point in their friendship like them cuddling on the couch (laughs) you know what i mean (laughs) oh yeah because they have to wait you're right i think it's like figuratively and literally though like that is the turning point in their relationship because up to that point like morgan freeman's trying to like just separate himself and he gets pulled in on so, like he's trying to like solve the obese guy's murder still. And then Brad Pitt gets the lawyer and he's in over his head. He realizes he's in over his head. You can see it in his face. Yeah. And uh, that's when they realize they're coming to, they need to come together mm-hmm. to work. And so that's what leads them when they wake up on that couch. I think it's, they're a team at that point. Yeah. And uh, yeah. So, they get the they clear the prints and that's what gets them into sloth. Yes, that's true. Wasn't um because uh, he um didn't doesn't John Doe wear doesn't he take pictures in yeah, some capacity? Uh, they like they think that he, he he pretends to be a member of the press. Yeah, and they're they're like in the stairwell trying to like have you ever seen anything like this before? Isn't and, that in his apartment? Like no, they're in the stairwell of his no, apartment. No, they're no, it's at Slo- they're outside Sloss' apartment. Oh, okay, and he takes their picture, and that's when Brad Pitt says, "Like, how do they find out so fast?" And Morgan Freeman's like, "They pay off members of the of the police to tell them to tip them off when something like this happens." So then they go to the hospital. They talk about how Sloth, you know, if if they shine a flashlight in his eyes, he would die of shock. Because he's been tortured. Mm-hmm. And then... Um, uh, they go... That's when they go and research. Or, or, oh no, he pays off the greasy cop. To... Plant evidence? Yeah, he prints off like the list of all those different books. Yeah, so then you can they can go to his apartment. Yeah, then they go to his apartment. They find him there. That's when he goes through the foot race. And then as they're going through his apartment, they see the developed photo yes. of them in the stairwell outside of Sloth's yeah, apartment. Yeah, okay. okay. And that's when they're like, he was there! He was there! And... And that's when the true manipulation of John Doe 
Yeah. Is revealed. Like, you yeah. know, he's good at whatever he's doing. But at that moment, it's that was that was shocking. That was like, whoa. Yeah. This guy's a lot not stronger, but he's a lot better than we give him credit for. So then I think I if I remember this right. So then. Sorry, I just found it. I just I'm looking at quotes as we're talking. And yeah. the moment where he takes his picture in the stairwell, he's shouting at him. He's like, I got your picture, man. I got your picture. And Mills goes, Oh, yeah, Detective Mills, M I L L S, fuck off. <laughs> as if that's his phone number. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, for as dark a movie as it is, it has a lot of funny things in it for oh, me. Oh, no. It does. It does. <laughs> really funny shit in it. And again, adds to the story. Gives it more substance, is more than just it about It makes the it killing. more realistic, in my opinion. Yes. Like, yes. totally more realistic. Um, yeah. <laughs> He's a nutbag. <laughs> He's a nutbag. The guy's sitting around <laughs> masturbating in his own feces. <laughs> Wait, no. Yeah. What was it? Oh, shoot, I can't remember. The thing about it, just because the fucker's got a library card doesn't make him Yoda. <laughs> 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 oh, man. Um, so, 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 so it does sound as though actually, Ash, you like this movie that, well, you, you didn't necessarily think you wouldn't, did you this time around or, or were you skeptical? Um, I don't know that I looked at it and thought, would I like it or not? Um, I was curious about the story and I was curious about what was, what more to it there was be- besides what I knew was that it was about someone killing based on the seven deadly sins. So I, I only went into it knowing that it was a murder, a story about murder based on the seven deadly sins. But I don't think I really had much expectation beyond that. I definitely didn't expect to be so engaged with it. At one point, I was sitting on the edge of the couch and then I had to stand up and walk around. Not because I was falling asleep, but oh, because wow. like my body was tensing up and I could feel my body tensing up while I was watching it. And so I just had to stand up and kind of move around and walk around and shake it out like what it was, part was it that? was really really I'm, engaging do you remember um, what was happening when you had to get up and walk around um maybe after the like, foot chase either the foot race or after the foot race okay yeah i think it was the foot race because you were saying that when brad pitt falls he like really does break yeah, he his like really in in, injures his he really injures his arm in one point, like lacerates his hand, like does a like down to the tendons yeah. his hand. Yeah. Um and I I I I'm pretty sure it was during it, one of the shots of that foot race is when he did it. Yeah, I think in the commentary something they're like, Oh, that was the moment. <laughs> you know? Yeah. 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 Um and then which screwed up their shooting because they had some scenes that they hadn't shot yet that would have happened in the movie before that. And some scenes, like there's one shot early on. <clears throat> excuse me, Jesus. Right, good one. Yeah. <laughs> there's there's a scene early on. Oh, Al Sausage. It's like all Al Sausage. <laughs> Worth uh, it. Totally worth it. There's uh, a scene early on in the precinct when he's like sitting at his desk and you can see his hand. And if you look closely, his hand is like crazy swollen because he had he took his cast off because it happened before he injured his arm. Oh. So he took everything off to shoot that but scene. And like, yeah, yeah. And then because Fincher is like a madman and is like got to do 85 takes, <laughs> he went all that time without his cast on and his hand ended up swelling up and like Oof. yeah so uh was was kevin spacey a surprise for you yes yeah i don't know how i didn't know that kevin spacey was in that movie but then i it was surprising to see him play that character I, and to see him so young yeah and to see him in such a different light than the other movies i've seen him in I think that uh, he, I mean, he's got such a small, he's the catalyst in the movie. His character is the catalyst of the movie. I'll, there's no doubt about that. But it's surprising to me that even now, he is not the one that's talked about when this movie comes up. Like, they don't talk about, like, oh, Kevin Spacey did such a great performance in it. Like, it's almost still, 
it's still a, a, a reveal, I think, for new people even picking up this movie now, unless they've listened to this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> like, like or that, read about it. <laughs> yeah, that Kevin Spacey is the murderer. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's, I, um, it's it's awesome that that could that you could have that experience twenty five years later. You know? yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, and well, I it think, just proves the point that Kevin Spacey is the catalyst. Right, right. His character is the catalyst to the story, not necessarily the story itself. Um. So what? You know, what I'm looking at the IMDb. He's not. You don't see him in the in the main listing. So that's kind of really? cool. Yeah. Yeah. See, so I I mean, it's just great that it's still this like kind of secret or reveal yeah. of the movie that ends up making it uh even this long. So it has uh Dave and I were talking about this uh last episode too and we'll recast it again, but was there a point was there a point as we were approaching the climax of the movie, was there a point where did you know, did you feel like it was going to go as bad as it did? No. 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 Because the way, for me, the way the story was built, once I met Gwyneth Paltrow's character, the first meeting of her, I didn't think anything. When she confided in Morgan Freeman, that's when I was like, she has a bigger role in this than I expected her to, which means she's going to be a part of the story going forward. And I knew something bad was going to happen, and it did not make me very happy. <laughs> wow, you really, you really have her character in a box there. <laughs> hey <Hey-o>! oh, <laughs> oh, ha ha! Very funny. Uh, R.I.P. Tracy. R.I.P. Yeah. <laughs> um, R.I.P. Dingleberry because he calls her Dingleberry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. But again, that's a credit to. Fincher, I guess, because he weaves her story into the story in such a way that I start to feel for her and her character and her personality and like she becomes somebody I want to see more in the movie. Yeah, and and seriously, in like three to four scenes that she's in in the whole movie. Yeah. It's enough. The ending is enough to devastate you. Yeah. Like, well, even that moment where she's listening to Somerset's character that we brought up earlier is devastating because of the, um, I guess the humanity that she brings to it, the part. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's hard to yeah. imagine that she's like the personality that she is now, like telling people what to do with their enemas and stuff. <laughs> yeah. And I, and I give so much credit to, I mean, it's, uh, I give a lot of credit to Fincher on not, of all the grotesque things that you see throughout this whole movie and the grotesque things that you see, the, the risks that you see him taking in his other films of not like he, he knows when to let your imagination fill in the blanks. Yeah. You know, like you, you, you literally like, I mean, it, I know it's a meme now, like what's in the box, <laughs> yeah. but like you're st- like, you only have an idea what's in the box and i mean i guess kevin spacey tells you what's in the box uh but you he never shows it and right. that i mean i give a ton of credit for that you know like he, doesn't have to. he shows reaction yeah. he shows somerset's reaction he shows mills reaction um and actually and- i don't know if mills ever does see it really no he just no. knows and um they do that little f- subliminal cut that is you know literally just her <laughs> close-up of her face like a, yeah um but yeah but, and we were talking we started talking about earlier but they don't show any of the murders i mean you sometimes you don't see the body no. and stuff but like you never see and so your mind fills in all of it and then based on the kind of detective work you end up kind of having to think about more of it than you'd like and um yeah that's yeah. the of course the, the i think i think greed is the like that's the one that literally gives me chills and you don't you only see glimpses of the you only like you only see the aftermath of all of these acts right Mm -hmm. but when they are breaking down how he could have been in there from friday evening after work to his body being discovered monday morning that he could have spent you know his his chair was literally soaked through with sweat and to know that (laughs) 
he spent 72 hours deciding what part of his body he was going to cut a pound of flesh out of. Oof. You know, like, and to know, like, that's, that to me is a million times that implication in them taking enough screen time to patiently walk you to that realization and allowing it to sink in is a million times more gruesome than if they would have just showed a vi like a montage of those 72 hours. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, or those quick flashes. Like, I, th I feel like if this movie was made in the last decade, while Somerset and Mills were going back and forth about those 72, there would be these, like, and you, it would have that sound effect, that like, <sighs> sound effect of like, <laughs> and it would show a glimpse of like, him sitting in the chair like, <laughs> And then like, and then another, and like <laughs> him like sitting on the ground and like, he's got the this. knife on his side. Yeah. You know what sound effect I'm talking yeah. about? You like, know, that, me, like, like, I don't feel like I saw that stuff as much before the crow the year before. And that, I, I, oh, like, really? I, so to me, it all comes from that. These little blowback sounds and then flashes. I mean, yeah, I, I would like to, someone to show me that technique in that manner prior to that film, because then I can let go of that. <laughs> my opposite yeah. view but it really seems to me is that that's where that kind of um thing comes from but it really gets used a lot like re oh, i've yeah. seen, just seen it a ton i remember like, it even at the time i was just like oh this is all a reaction to the you know the visual style of that movie um yeah there's i found a quote here from fincher it says well, he was deciding to do it um he uh he said that eventually agreed to do the film because he was drawn to the script which he found to be a quote connect the dots movie that delivers about inhumanity it's psychologically violent it implies so much not about why you did but how you did it he found it a meditation yeah. on evil rather than a police procedural because there yeah. Is, yeah. it does get into a lot of the f philosophy uh once once you do see john doe he's got a lot to say and it's pretty oh uh, yeah <laughs> and, and i was struck by when john doe reveals himself in the police department and he has the bandages on his fingertips yeah they didn't have to show that. Like, I mean, they didn't have to do that. Because and for me, it was such a small detail for them talking about not having fingerprints. Yeah. Like, I probably would have forgotten about that if John Doe had just come out and not been bandaged on his hands. I probably would have forgotten that, oh, yeah, he had his, like, didn't, they didn't find fingerprints at the other crime scenes. So this had to have been why. Yeah. I don't think I would have connected the dots. And been, been, <clears throat> I don't think I would have been upset if I had seen John Doe and I wouldn't have thought, well, wait a minute, he has fingertips, so it can't be him. Yeah. I would have justified it in a different way in my head. But does it change it that they put, they put that level of detail in there? Like, doesn't it? Yeah. Make it yeah, it like, makes it more impactful. It makes yeah. it more, it legitimizes the horrific backstory that John Doe has yeah. and the horrific lengths he goes to, to torture his victims. And it's super he, creepy in that you realize upon, upon multiple viewings that not only does he have his, his fingers bandaged, but he's got Tracy's blood on his shirt. Like, he's, yeah. that's what he's oh, just done. But yeah. we don't realize it till later. I think that's when he makes that call that I've gone and done it again. Yeah, that's what I was trying to... Except for he wouldn't need to do it then. The, maybe that was the... I well, think that, that was to get them the to the model's one, apartment, right? right? Or, or, yeah, either the model or the, or the nightclub. Um, hook yeah. thing to keep to keep them away from going back to um so he had could buy the time to go to mills's apartment oh that's mm -hmm. right that's right yeah so it just kept mills out yeah yeah that it was all to keep mills because he said when he's telling the i mean we're kind of there towards the end now right uh when he's like sitting there explaining to mills what he, oh like, yeah why he's envy and he, he tried to live the life that he always wanted. And you realize he did that with Tracy. Like, he he tried to, like, be a quote-unquote husband or whatever. Like, what... And then you have to think what that entailed and what he, like, tried to do with her. And, and I can't I, believe you guys have seen this movie more than once. <laughs> I've <laughs> like, seen it To a be lot. perfectly honest, <laughs> yeah. I don't have any desire to ever see this movie again. Well, okay. Not so, because it wasn't good, not because it wasn't engaging or that I didn't, I can't even say enjoy or appreciate, but like the story struck me, but it struck me in such a way that I'm like, you know what? I'm good. It's a one-timer. It's, it's a, a one -timer. train spotting for her. <laughs> yeah. 
The, I've Alzheimer. seen, I've watched that one multiple times too. It depends on the level of uh, kind of emotional <laughs> upset, you know, how, how hard it yeah. hits me emotionally to whether or not I want to see something again. Cause sometimes once I'm over the, the shock, the trauma of it. Yeah. I'm also so intrigued by other things I like yeah. about that movie. Yeah. No, I'm sure I, if I watched it again, I would notice a dozen things I never yeah. noticed the first time. I'm so, impressed okay. that I noticed that um, that something bad would likely happen to the Tracy character just because of her extra screen time. Of I never her presence noticed. in the movie. Like, why does she need to be a part of this story? <laughs> yeah. Oh, <Yeah>. shit. <laughs> so, um, so we haven't really come right out and said what the ending is, and I don't think we need to. But, um, but so let's talk about afterwards. So, like the next day, what did you... and? And you and you said it multiple times over the course of the week or two that it's been since we've watched it. Yeah. What? Um, so what? What's your reaction? I woke up feeling sad for um, Mills. For Brad Pitt. For Brad Pitt. Right. Very sad because I imagined, and I think that's where I put myself in the context of the character of uh -huh. like, imagine waking up the next day knowing that your spouse is dead and that you had killed somebody as a vengeful act against them because they're the ones that killed your spouse and like your life and so many other people's lives are changed forever. Yeah. And I was genuinely sad for Brad Pitt. Yeah. And that, and I like, it really struck me. Uh, I forget who you were talking to at one point about it. And you said, I don't want to talk about it too much. Cause I'll just end up feeling sad for Brad Pitt again. Yeah. And like, and that's, and I mean, and I, I can totally respect that. Uh, but Dave and I were talking last last episode. Um, sorry. <laughs> Hashtag drive-by. Uh, we were that? talking about... That's blowing a burp at someone? Oh, no, no. Uh, a a drive-by is when you fart as you walk by them. Oh, um, oh okay. So that was a, that yeah. a drive-by burp because okay. yeah. he was talking in the... <laughs> I, got, I got the furps right now. Fart burps. Yeah. They're burps that smell like farts. Marriage. Uh yeah, hashtag marriage, right? <laughs> right. Uh, so we say that a lot um, in our house. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nice. you married this. Yeah, <laughs> that's, what he'll yeah say. that's our line. You married this. You married nice. This. Oh, I can see uh, the t-shirts. Yeah. <laughs> uh, strap shirts, strap shirts, and say you married this. Uh, um. but we were saying that it. It's. I feel like it's almost. You can almost equally feel just as bad for. Morgan Freeman's character because he ends yes saying that the, the chief is talking to him and saying that it's going to be a long road and it's going to take a lot of time for Brad Pitt to get over this and Morgan Freeman just looks at him and says I'll be there meaning he's not going to retire anymore yep and I thought about that he spent the entire movie Basically talking to anybody that was willing to listen, I can't wait to get the fuck out of here. Yep. And in that moment, you realize that it, the city has devoured him just like it has all the other people that he could not save. You know? Oh, that's a great way of putting it. That is yeah. a good way of putting it. And yeah. he, he is just as stuck in that hell as anybody else. And yep. he's going to continue to do that job with a bunch of colleagues that don't like him. Uh, that's another thing that I just, I, I feel bad for Morgan's Freeman character more throughout that movie because I, that the opening scene when they're like, he, he says, did the kid see it? Like they're looking oh, at that. Like, that's double right. Homicide. I forgot about that. Yeah. And he's like, did the kid see it? And like the other detective is like, what the fuck kind of question is that? You know what? I, I can't wait to see you go Somerset, you know, like, like yeah, nobody I likes him that. and just like, oh, and then to know, like he's, he's trying to get out. All he's trying to do is just like put this last week in and then he's going to go. And then in the end, like he knows that he, that Brad Pitt is never going to get to do this job again. And the, he has to do it. He has to keep doing it. And, yeah. oh, man, I feel just as bad for him. because I mean, there's really, John, I mean, John Doe took, like, took three lives in that last act. Oh, yeah. Nice. He's like, dropping bombs left and right. That's <laughs> a good one. So it, it just, oh, man. 
Yeah, I, I didn't just think about it that way, but you're absolutely right. I just realized something as I, I was looking over some of the the quotes and stuff. Is that uh, let me read you a couple of them. One, and then I want you to see if you know who said them. Uh, okay. So there's a reason for this. Um, the one uh, first is uh, we see a, uh, uh, only in oh. Well, okay. Well, I'll try to do it. Then I'll back up. So we see a deadly sin on every street corner and every home and we tolerate it. We tolerate it because it's common. It's trivial. We tolerate it morning, noon, and night. So that's one. And then the other one is, I just don't think I can continue to live in a place that embraces and nurtures apathy as if it were virtue. So maybe it's Uh, not too hard, but um, two different characters said those things. The second one is... is, um... The second one is Somerset, right? Yeah, yeah. And the first one is John Doe. Yeah. But I was, I was, my guesses. <laughs> yeah, I was a little surprised, though, reading them, how sort of similar in a way the they, perspectives they are. They are. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, no. I, um, I, I really feel that that sums it up when Somerset is reading John Doe's random journal that he pulls Mm -hmm. off the shelf and it is he's reading those like it sounds like the speeches that he's been giving throughout the movie when he reads yeah john doe like the random line from a random piece of a random journal i because he like it's it's like him somerset and john doe are both ends of the spectrum right like John Doe goes to the psychopath route right. and Somerset goes to the, I just need to get away from this oh, route. Yeah. Or, like, yeah. Or to try to help. Yeah. Or, or to try to help. Yeah. Right. Um, and yeah, man. It's a good, it's a good, is a, that, that layer I didn't quite get um, the, the similarity and perspective to the Somerset and John Doe, the sort of despairing, uh, similar despair at humanity one expressed in in one way uh in the other yeah. in another and i think too so the the scene we're talking about where at the end he's like i'll be around that was actually yeah. tag, tagged on i mean it was supposed to just cut to black and credits but yeah they made him go and add that to it just because they're like you can't oh. <laughs> we can't put this out <laughs> um right but and then and then uh, fincher was saying something in one of the commentaries about how it didn't bother him that much because once that moment happens, you kind of, you're just in a daze anyway. So nothing really, nothing right. really registers. It's not like it can ruin the thing, but it is interesting because we, now that we've talked about it, where I feel like I had never considered the effect that Mills and Tracy had on him in terms of maybe giving him back some of the hope that was gone. Um, right. To where when he says that it's not, it's not as with as heavy a heart as he was in the, in the, at the beginning of the movie. It's almost like he right. had a little renewed vigor somehow. I'm not sure how he would, but from this, you know, terrible thing that happened. Yeah. Oh, man. What else has David Fincher done that I would know? Uh, well, Fight Club. Um, well, yeah, besides um, those two. He did Social a, Network. Yeah. Oh, Social Network. that was also a good one. Yeah. yeah. He did the girl with the dragon dragon tattoo movie, the American one, which okay. we yeah, which yeah, we, we have not seen. seen. Oh, I, I really Either. like that. I mean, that's a tough movie. I, Either it's got version a, though, we haven't. Oh, I I did watch the uh, I did watch the is it sw- Swedish? I think um, Swedish. Yeah, I think I watched it after. Um, it I don't like it as much. I really the 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 characterizations and uh, like uh, was it Rooney Mara? I think. Uh, she's just yeah. incredible. She's uh, unbelievable to me in that role. And I didn't really know her before, but I don't really care to see somebody else do that character. Um, uh, yeah, it, it's, it's, that's a tough movie. There's a couple of really tough things in it. One in particular I can think of a- otherwise it's not that, I mean, it's, it's, it's rough for like a scene that I could think or a couple, yeah. There's, yeah. there's a couple of icky things, but otherwise it's, that's, that's outstanding. He did gone girl. Fincher did. Yeah, we haven't seen that either. Uh, Alien 3. Oh, which, yeah. I mean, Alien is my... The Alien franchise is my favorite franchise of movies. 
in Alien 3, we, I mean, there are probably Alien fans that would throw up in their mouth when they hear this, but Alien 3 is my favorite one out of the Alien <laughs> franchise. I remember we talked about that, but I had forgotten. Yeah. yeah. So, um, but, yeah, Fincher, man. What else did he, he do? He stuff. did, he originated that House of Cards show, or he was the first director for yeah. that. Oh, yeah. with Kevin Spacey. Yeah. With Kevin Spacey. Yep, yep. Yeah. And he did. Uh, I wanted to watch that one. Yeah, I, I I have watched a little bit of it. I I haven't gotten into it. <laughs> yeah. So I, I, yeah. I tried and kind of gave up. But uh, he did that uh, show got created off of an algor off yeah. off of Netflix algorithm. Yep. That's so cool <laughs> to me. The the data of from Netflix said that people, people would watch, would a, show watch like a show. This. People would watch a show created like directed by david fincher starring kevin spacey that's what they would like and so netflix put the money into it and it was a hit and who are the writers i don't know oh I'll not david quick. fincher I don't know. but i, I mean so. it was just like they based on people's viewing choices yep that's what their algorithm spit out and so they put those two things together and that's what made the decision for them Isn't to start making their own content it's i I'm a math teacher. Of course, that's fascinating. <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> what's What's also interesting too is that you know a seven must. I mean, that's you know the previous pairing of those two is seven. Yeah. So, so I mean, I must have made a um, an impression on on the Netflix viewers. I guess so. Um, it's saying is seven on my, Netflix. Oh, I don't think so. Things come and go. You know, Michael yeah. Dobbs. I guess it's a series of novels. Uh, Michael based from someone called Michael Dobbs. Um, gotcha. okay. Fincher also did the um uh Zodiac about the Zodiac oh, killer. That movie's fantastic oh, yeah. if you have three and a half hours that you never want to get back. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I, know. <laughs> I know I saw it, but I don't really I barely remember it. It's because it's you forget the beginning by the time you get to the end, it's so long. <laughs> yeah. It goes across like sixty years. It's it's like this ridiculously long movie. But yeah. it's so good. It is really good. Panic Room. I've never seen Panic Room. I've always wanted to. For, but I've seen. Time. I've seen Panic Room. And the game. The game was cool. The game came out between. Oh, you, we've seen the game. That's the one with Michael Douglas and oh, Sean Penn. Oh, that's a good one. Where like his brother gets him. Yep. Like that movie's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. I I saw that in the theater because I was so enamored of Seven that then that came out. Yeah. Next, and then Fight Club, and then the other that's big one is uh, Benjamin Button. Curious case of Benjamin Button. That's oh, a, yeah. I haven't seen that one either. And that one's oh, a little I haven't forgettable. Seen that one. You've seen it. It's a little forgettable. Yeah, yeah I saw it, but I don't remember it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There you and go. That, that's a bad sign. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it's not that it's bad. It just it didn't leave the impression on me. Um, so then, my question is: Do you feel like knowing now that I've seen what movies I've watched with you? Uh-huh. How does that influence your future choices or how will it? Uh, I don't I mean I don't know. I well we're going to keep V for Vendetta. Right. And Secretary. Yes. So there's I mean there's more probability that those will get watched before my next choice would get watched, right? Yeah. Do you have um, that choice? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, I I wouldn't even know what it would be. What um you should really be strategic about it now, especially having yeah. said that to where yeah. maybe you can make it all the more appealing so that she's like, oh. yeah, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Well, the next turn, she'll pick three and I'll pick one of them. Yeah. Which I have no idea what three I'll pick right now. Yeah. <laughs> so um, let's get a final verdict on this on seven and okay. then uh, then we'll we'll call the Palmer's pick segment done and then. We'll maybe do uh maybe do a King's Corner. Mm -hmm. And uh I don't know if we're gonna have time to talk about Cyborg tonight. <laughs> oh, I got uh, a comic book. <laughs> this is yeah. can you see that? Oh my gosh, it's a Cy <laughs> Van Damme Cyborg comic book. It Are you kidding me? A Canon video comic. I got this on eBay a few years ago. Oh it, my goodness. And it's literally uh, the comic is an excuse to advertise this and other um, canon, canon films. releases. Yeah, it's amazing. Wow. <laughs> oh man. Okay, so final verdict on seven for Palmer's picks. Would you consider this a pick? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. 
I, I agree. I think it is definitely a pick. It's a good one. It's worth watching. It's definitely worth watching. Awesome. So how will that go in the future when one person doesn't choose the... Well, so, like, if... So on the next... You mean, like, if the next round, the one that I pick out of her three... If I don't like it and it's not a pick, is that yeah, what you mean? Or, or vice versa. Like if it's not a collective pick, because I'm just imagining like, that happens. Mm. Oh, I, I was imagining a visual, and there isn't necessarily a visual. I was imagining yeah. like snap uh, picture sound, and then it cuts to this like picture of the two of you, thumbs up, each wearing "I married this" shirts with arrows pointing at each other. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we need. <laughs> oh my god! It'll be a YouTube segment, but. Uh, no. But and then like if it wasn't because there could be like you know the thumbs up down type yeah thing. but um yeah if it's a split vote I wonder what that would mean I don't know I mean because like there's a, there's potential for secretary I might not pick it and she might even though that's in my three oh yeah or you both might not like it that's that's yeah possible, yeah yeah hmm True. I I mean I definitely support seven I like it it's a fantastic movie yeah I, it, like I think it just it's very environmental. It's got great cinematography and acting yeah. and See, my biggest problem is gonna be picking movies that you haven't already seen a hundred times or that you're But I don't think that should limit your three choices. Because okay. I mean also part of the 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 three that you pick or offer as options should be with three movies. Oh, you gave me that yawn. <laughs> Damn it. Uh if you're going to propose three movies as an option, there should be three movies you're willing to watch. Yes. So that really is what the determining factor for your option should be, is what you want to watch. Not, Not necessarily, whether you've seen I don't it. want to pick this because you haven't seen it. And plus, that's just going to be unfair, like you've already pointed out. Yeah. I mean, there's every chance I've already seen the movie. Right. You know what I mean? Like, Yeah. Uh, and there's every chance that you haven't seen one that I'm going to pick. Right. So. That's fair. Um, yeah. I don't like the idea of it just being a natural outgrowth of your, you know, leisure time together. <laughs> so, yeah. So yeah. it might be a while before you guys like, oh, we have another one, but, but no, you, that's know, true. you know, it, it shouldn't be, be work. A couple weeks before we have a chance to <laughs> no, sit down no, and watch no. it should not one. be work at all. No. Yeah. But this is a great conversation. Good. Thanks for having me, guys. Yeah. Thanks, thanks for, for doing this. Joining Long Walk Short Drink. We appreciate it. It's been great. Yeah. Cheers. Awesome. Clink. Yeah. All right. Cheers. <laughs> that seems like a good sign off for long walk, short drink. Is <laughs> yeah. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Babe, there's. I got there's, my own two drinks. Only... <laughs> Babe, there's only one thing left that we have to do. What? We have to fuck. <laughs> I wasn't that's sure. That's a part was, of the show. I wasn't sure. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. That's part of the show. <laughs> I wasn't sure if I should say what or if she was supposed to say what. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I will leave you two to your own devices. Are you gonna give the dog a bath? That's a euphemism. I was gonna by say the way. for sure that yeah. means something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, all right, babe. I love you. All right, Dave. Good to see you. Nice to see you too. This was very fun. Thanks for doing it. Thank you, Smooch. Love you. I love you too. All right, I'm going to turn this mic down because I'm going to talk more directly into it now. You want to do? Uh, you want to do uh, um, a king corner and then we'll sign it off. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Oh. We're um, we're uh, honey. <laughs> this machine just called me an asshole. <laughs> That's such a good imitation. <laughs> So where are you at right now? What are you on? Um, so actually, just today, um, the, uh, the 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 updated version came in the mail. Oh, it is literally heavy. Like I haven't weighed it yet, but it yeah. is it is substantial. Look at that thing, huh? And compo- compared to this one, like I feel like if this one's three pounds from the seventy eight, this one's easily like four to seven. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's good. I got a nice looking copy. I'm very pleased, uh, and I'm excited to be able to like use the correct or the the number, the chapter numbers that I'm 
dealing with in the audiobook. Right. Because um, right now I just finished what in the 78 version would be up to chapter 39, starting 39 on page 386 out of 823 pages. Whereas in the one I'm actually listening to in the, the 1990 version, that chapter 39 would be chapter 49 and page 628 out of 1152 pages. Yeah. That's yeah. quite a big difference. That's so outrageous. Yeah. A major difference. I didn't realize it was, there was so much, uh, yeah, so much. So right now what's happening is, uh, the trash can man is with, uh, flags group and they just crucified someone and, uh, oh, trash can wow. had his first, uh, conversation with, uh, Randall flag. Yeah. It's fucked up oh, as man. crucifixion is in general. You're not going to believe <laughs> the tie. Can you see? Can you see? Can you see what happens? Oh <laughs> my gosh! In Cyborg, are you kidding me? <laughs> oh my gosh! I can't wait to watch this movie. It's gonna be so good. It's so disturbing. Anyway, but so yeah. that's that's kind of uh, as far as I've gotten, and it's that's... gotten a lot more like fucked up than uh, than uh, oh yeah uh, previous no. Stephen King books. Like it's <laughs> it's just like oh man, yeah it, um oh. And that edition is just so great. I, you're, uh, I forgot how good the stand is. Man, it's a fantastic one. That's great. Um, yeah, you're definitely getting into the fucked up stuff. So yeah, I just fin, I just finished Full Dark No Stars. Oh God, speaking of fucked up, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And uh, I'm I'm actually on the epilogue right now. And, uh, it, it or his author's note. And it starts out like the first line in the author's note is essentially like, I'm sorry if these stories were hard to listen to <laughs> or hard to read. Uh, if it's any consolation, they were hard to write. And it's just like, it's like he knew how, how terrible they were. Even while he was like, it, it, he doesn't make any apologies because he had to suffer through writing them, you know? Hey buddy, come here. Huh. That's, that's kind of interesting that... <laughs> I mean, I understand that because when I make certain things or like particularly music, it it does, yeah, it comes from a therapeutic place, but I just, um, and, a, and a personal one, and I don't make very much of it because of that. I'm hardly prolific in that way. So for someone like him that writes so, so much, I would imagine a certain amount of it to be, um, I don't know, <laughs> less like Not urgent, you know, more just kind yeah. of a... a artistic practice or exercise but man if you had to exercise as in like e-x-o-r right, size right, those stories right. i'm sure that was unpleasant well i and i've always said um like tolkien is a great example that i like to use i i imagine he had to write lord of the rings uh you know he wrote from the time he was in world war one all the way until his death on that world on middle earth mm. and i feel like he almost had to do it Otherwise, his brain would have blown up. You know, like, you imagine having an entire world in your head and having to get it out. Yeah. And then, you um, you know, someone like Stephen King, he's got multiple worlds in his head. And so <laughs> I, I think exercise, EX, is a, is a great way to say it. And, and not everything that's going to come out of there is pleasant, going to be pleasant, you know? Right, yeah. Um, yeah, it... I, I am glad to be through that. That's one of the few. And that's the second time I've gone through that collection. And I remember feeling that way. The first time I listened to it, I am glad to be through it and not, and not really, I have no desire to really go back. I found out that two of the stories have been made into movies. Mm. I am interested in watching those movies. Which are um, those again? I think might've told me last time I forgot. Um, uh, little driver is one of them. That was like a lifetime. It was, it was a lifetime movie. Hmm. Uh, and that one is, I, I mean, I don't want to give spoilers about what the stories are about, but, but like bad stuff, really bad stuff happens in that. Uh, it's, it's kind of like I spit on your grave. Oh no. <laughs> yeah. <Damn it. laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, and then the other one is uh, a good marriage or a perfect marriage. I can't remember. Oh, I've that. heard of that one. Um, and that one is, uh, 
that story is a little less brutal um which is weird to say cuz <laughs> it's about a wife finding out that her husband of 30 years has been a serial killer Oof. um unbeknownst to her the whole time um and so but that one is that one's yeah that one's a, a little less brutal and that one was a conventional film like a a movie mm-hmm. Uh, not a lifetime movie or anything, but I, I, I mean, I'm sure I will end up watching both of those for some reason. Uh, oh, that's exactly I, the kind of thing I've done. Like I'll read yeah. the book and then seek out the movie, which crazily I hadn't seen a lot of these early movies. Yeah. So, um, but I'm, I'm glad to be through it. I'm pretty sure 11, 22, 63 is my next one. So, which I, I remember really having a lot of fun with that one the first time through. So oh, good. I'm excited to go through that one again. Oh, you know, but, I don't want to forget to mention, um, uh, so uh, don't let me, um, uh, remember what you were about to say, but, uh, this, this caught me by a big surprise when, you're, uh, we start to get to know, uh, mother Abigail a little better. The old lady oh, yeah. singing and playing guitar. Yeah. She refers to, um, people in her family, her grandmother talking about, uh, people who have God shine. Or just the shining. <laughs> I was like, yeah. whoa. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. I was I wasn't uh, prepared for that kind of like interconnected thing. Cause I, you know, you talked about the, the you know, all of his works somehow are dancing around the Dark Tower series, but yeah. This was a yeah. an early example of the novels connecting. Uh, yep. Uh I I think um yeah, it's it's great. I, I just I, I, I think he just has fun doing that. Just has fun putting those connections in and it really adds this when once you get to a point where you're you've consumed so much of his work you really start to see the game of trying to find those connections and how Hmm. these things work with each other and um because the stand is no exception to being tied to the dark tower in some way and and then it's tied to the shining, which helps tie the shining to the dark tower no oh, um, wow. in some ways uh yeah, it just it's amazing that he can keep track of his work as much work as he has. he can keep track of it in such a way that he can make those subtle connections like that, yeah, it's you know? pretty cool that they're not just like ham fisted and just so obvious connections, you know like you know like that's. That's one line and two words that help tie that to the shining. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And uh I, I mean I guess which is the title of the novel. So maybe but, it is a little hand but, fisted. Well, but. but the way that they talk about um it, it's like what the shining is, I guess that's you know, that kind of uh um, yeah. premonition yeah. slash uh you know telekinetic connection people have. Um Right. So yeah. But I mean obviously it I think God's shine would have been enough, but the fact is, he says, or just the shining. I don't know. I, I certainly don't begrudge it. I'm I'm glad <laughs> it's in there. Oh yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. Cibula, cibula, bump de bump de bump. <laughs> Sorry, that's in my oh, in my notebook because oh. the trash can. <laughs> oh man, the trash can man. <laughs> There's the one line I actually wrote down, like the whole sentence, because it really struck me was, "There's really nothing so comfortable." So there's really nothing so comforting to the beaten of spirit and broken of skull than a good strong dose of thy will be done. <laughs> I was talking about oh. the trash can man's uh, allegiance to the to the dark man, as they call it, Randall Flag. <laughs> yeah, yep. Oh man, Randall Flag is such a great villain too. I thought he was going. I I've heard that name before, but didn't know anything about anything, and had this. I I thought, always thought that Randall Flag was a was a, among the heroes of the stand. So, so that, Oh yeah. I mean, I no. found out quickly that that was not the case, but uh, yeah. Um, but no, yeah, man, I'm, I'm enjoying it. The, yeah, the darker turns. I really, I, I think the things that must bother me most are sexual violence. Now that it, it, if I had to, I'm realizing now when, when I get truly disturbed by something, it's always that. <laughs> so those are the things that yeah. are kind of new to his work to the extent, or at least they are, that they've come up in the shining with the trash can man and the kid, but also um, the the group the group encounters like um, oh it's it's the group with uh, 
with Fran and and Harold and stuff, they they encounter a bunch of like men that uh, had kept a harem, uh, and they're pretty graphic about talking oh. about some of the practices there. Uh, uh, so, yeah, I know but, what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ugh. It's terrifying. <laughs> it's dark. Yeah, it's dark stuff. Full dark. That's his <laughs> full dark. <laughs> no stars, a... man. Yeah, full dark. No stars. It's gonna end up a uh, hashtag for the show as well. Um, so, um, awesome. Well, this has been long walk, short drink, episode nine, man. Yes, my nine in the bag. Palm, the return of Palmer's picks. Just moving that apostrophe uh, he... a little. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> fucking ain't right. Yeah, fucking ain't right. Palmer's picks is back. Came no, from 1999, great. the greatest year yeah. in your movie greatest history. Greatest year ever. And we started in 2016, the worst year in American history since. Motherfucker. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> oh, hi. Oh, you know what? Just real quick, where they sign off. Oh, you haven't seen this. We got a new dog a while back. This oh is, my oh. gosh, look at that dog. Yeah, hi, dog. She is the best. Me, 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 she kisses my nose, like <laughs> eats it. She's Aww. the greatest. All right, guys, awesome. here we're podcasting. <laughs> oh man, she's a melt your heart. All right, going out of here. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah, so number awesome. nine, nine in the can. Nine is in the can. Uh, so next time, obviously, we we'll talk about cyborg. Um, I've also been yeah. spending a lot of time with uh, the Exorcist three, this new uh, Blu-ray that came out. The that's the like the. The third Exorcist, but the one that's all that's from the author and directed by the author, and evidently had a very different really? kind of a kind of convoluted history to it got change and stuff. Anyway, very cool. And then also this movie called The Ninth Configuration, which is a sort of unofficial sequel to The Exorcist that came out in the late seventies, early eighties. Um. Anyway, so maybe I'll send you previews for those um, or something. But we <clears throat> saw. Let- uh, there's been great things. Uh, so I saw Doctor Strange. Oh, in yeah. The theater. I saw Ash and I went and saw The Arrival. Yeah. With Amy Adams. I was just hearing someone talking about that. Fantastic. Like, it's fantastic. Um, and then Ash and I watched on Friday uh, Swiss Army Man. Oh. With I... Daniel Radcliffe. Oh, okay. Uh, Is that where he's a skinhead? No, no, okay. Uh, that that's the one that's getting ready to come out. Okay. Uh, Swiss Army Man is about a man who is stranded on a desert island and is about to commit suicide, and a body washes up on the shore of this deserted island. Whoa! And the body is actually Daniel Radcliffe, not actually Daniel Radcliffe, but the body is played by Daniel Radcliffe, Whoa. and it's Swiss Army Man because like. Uh, it keeps farting and th- th- <laughs> I'm not giving anything away because uh, he actually uses the gas that's coming out of the body like a jet ski to escape the deserted <laughs> island and get back to the mainland. Oh and it, it, it's Swiss Army Man in the sense that like he's got like karate action and so he like uses it to like split logs and like he he just like does all these different things, but uh, it, it is, I it, it's a very I, I I can't even I can't even like uh, what I've already said is I, I don't know like I, I mean Ash and I when it was over that's gonna be like, the, that's gonna be I, the tease at the beginning for sure that's yeah just long like, thing where you couldn't say anything. I, I mean, I don't even know it. When it was over, I I said like that movie was really intriguing, but not in, not necessarily in a good way. Like it was just like, but it was really like it's worth watching. I'm fascinated and for it, sure by that description. Yeah, and like, um, it's an onion. There's a lot of layers there, <laughs> a lot to take apart. But it's uh. Yeah, it's a good movie. It was good. I liked it. What did you? See, what it. platform did you see it on? Uh, we just watched it. Uh, we have an Amazon Fire TV that we watch a lot of stuff on. 
Oh, so that's not um, unnecessary, like Netflix or or Amazon in particular. It's uh, you can rent it off of Amazon. Oh, okay, but um, it's not on Amazon Prime. This dog, incidentally, her name is Eleven, after Stranger the Stranger Things character. <laughs> really, yeah, that we call is... her L. <laughs> That is awesome, and she has some Tank kind of special power. Tank was just in power. here a second ago. I saw his little uh, tail. Yeah, bulldozing around. Ash, and Ash just gave him a, a bath. So does he hate that as much He's as a... most dogs do? Uh, no. I mean, he'll he'll tolerate the bath, but when he comes out of the bath, he's like, I don't know. He gets this like bolt of energy. He just likes to run around and be crazy. We call it crazy dog. Oh yeah, no, I know. It just mean Maggie does that. We haven't given him yeah. a bath yet, so we don't know. We've had her. It's been a while, um, like at least a couple of months, but yeah, I don't think she's gotten a bath yet. She still has this kind of great puppy smell. She's about a year old-ish. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Yeah, she's a she's a spitfire and a really sweet dog. But That's uh, awesome. All right. Well, I know you've been up for a lot, <laughs> so you should yeah, get some rest. I, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sign off here. I'm going to go ahead and uh, stop my recording. All right. Well, have a good night. It's always good. See you.